Comics, and I am a published American mangaka. Now, before my manga was made available in stores like Barnes & Noble's, Forbidden Planet, and a few other stores, I first had to get my work copywritten. And the chances are, if you're watching this video, you're an author, an artist, or someone creative who's looking to find out how you can actually protect your work. And the truth is, on your journey to sharing your work with the world, copywriting your work is probably the most important step you'll take. So I'm going to do my best to explain the process to you in really simple English to make this process a lot less scary and something that you can actually do on your own, which is completely possible. So here are the things I'm going to be covering in this video. What is intellectual property? What is a copyright? What can a copyright protect? What isn't protected under a copyright? How does a copyright differ from a trademark? I'll also be going over what a poor man's copyright is and whether it actually stands up in the court of law. I'll briefly go over the application process and finally, I'll tell you where to obtain your application and give you the official links to the Library of Congress. And before we get started, I wanted to thank Lewis for suggesting this video. Thank you so much for supporting me through like my entire journey so far and I really hope that this video will help you make your dreams come true as well. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You have no idea. And now that we've got all of that out the way, my friends, let's get started. What is intellectual property? This is a really important term to know because it's going to be all over your copyright application. And in really simple terms, intellectual property is basically property that you created using your intellect, your mind, your imagination. So it's things you made up and you have full ownership and authorship of. So if you're the creator, it's your intellectual property. What is a copyright? A copyright is basically something that you apply for through the US government, in this case, if you're watching this from the United States, you apply for this and it gives the United States government um, the ability to protect your work from people who want to use your work without your permission, people who want to claim ownership of your intellectual property, and it also protects um, you from people um, using your artwork and bootlegging a bunch of products using your art um, and it all and if you're a writer or an author or a playwright um, it protects your work from those who want to plagiarize your work so that's why it's really important to get a copyright here's a great example of how copywriting your work can help protect your work from being copied stolen and plagiarized here's some artwork by the very famous mangaka group from Japan called clamp and here is the blatant ripoff. This, my friends, is copyright infringement. And just so that you know, the copycats totally got sued and pretty much lost their jobs. So yeah, don't steal other people's ideas and be sure to copyright your work. What does a copyright protect? A copyright protects a lot of things. It protects everything from um, architectural drawings, to fashion designs, to things like poetry, um, plays, scripts, drawings, paintings, sculptures, music. Um, it protects so many different things. If you're the owner, if you're the creator, you can protect it using a copyright. What is not protected under a copyright? Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, but please bear with me, okay? Um, you need to be either the sole owner of the intellectual property in order for you to copyright it, or it's something that you collaborated with with someone else. Um, the application actually allows you to write down multiple um, names, so your name and the name of the person who also wrote your, the book with you, or um, the name of the person who wrote the script with you and so on and so forth and it'll actually give you a space where you can fill in and write down what each of you contributed to the work. However, um, things like commissioned work you cannot um, claim ownership to 
because you were commissioned to create it. Um, it's um, okay, I'll explain that a little bit more. If you worked for a company like Disney and you helped them create characters for the Aladdin movie, let's just say, right? Even if you came up with the design for Genie, it doesn't really matter because Disney owns the copyright. They hired you to make that you work for Disney and anything and everything created um, under the Disney bubble belongs to Disney. It does not belong to Donny Anderson. It belongs to Disney. There are a number of things that cannot be protected with a copyright. Um, you cannot copyright logos. You cannot copyright mascots. These are things that can only be protected under a trademark. You also cannot copyright um, inventions. That's absolutely that. That's for a patent. You cannot copyright those things. You cannot copyright like if you make a discovery about on George Washington, for instance. You found out he actually was in contact with Martians his entire life. Um, you cannot copyright this information. That becomes kind of like public information. Um, if you write a book about George Washington's life and included this discovery and someone wanted to write a book on George Washington as well and use this information, they would need to give you credit in the book um, saying that they got this information from your book. This is to prevent any problems with them, you know, getting sued for plagiarism. So that's why in school when you make reports you need to be able to say where you got your sources from because without doing that you're actually stealing someone else's work. So that's why your teachers are so on you when it comes to um, saying where you got all your information from. How does a copyright differ from a trademark? You cannot copyright things like logos and such, that, that could only be trademarked and what a trademark is, it is a mark that represents your trade, your company, your business, so things like logos and mascots and things like that, um, they would not have the circle with the C in it, they would instead have the circle with the R in it, which stands for registered trademark, or they would have TM, which is trademark. Um, anything that represents a business. Um, a logo, a mascot like I mentioned before, those can only be trademarked. But this video isn't about trademarking, it's about copywriting, but I just want to make sure that you guys understand you cannot copyright a logo, that just d cannot be done. What is a poor man's copyright and will it protect my work? Now this is something I hear a lot of people talking about, the poor man's copyright, which is basically you write all your stuff down or you print it out, you print out all of your drawings and you mail it to yourself. And being that it's been stamped by the post office with, the, with a date and so on, the idea is as long as you don't tamper with the envelope, don't open it or anything, that if someone ever stole your work, you can bring this envelope to, to court and be like, look, I mailed this to myself, this is the date, so yeah. I, I made this up first. This is this is the real stuff. The problem with that is it doesn't stand up in the court of law. I know, I know you're probably not happy about this. Some of the some of you were hoping this would work, but if you go onto the copyright website or the Library of Congress website, the both government sites, they make it very clear in their FAQs that the poor man's copyright cannot be honored in the court of law. It will not be acknowledged. Um, if you, like, the moment you create something, you own the copyrights, but it does not give the government the ability to protect you until you filed for a copyright that gives them, you know, official documents, something that really says you made it up on this day, blah, 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 blah. And, um, until you do that, they really don't have the power to protect you, unfortunately. So, you know, spend a little money and protect your stuff properly. If your work means that much to you, you'll dish out the money and you'll copyright your work. So don't go around mailing stuff to yourself. Get the real deal. Don't do the poor man's copyright. Do the middle class man's copyright and dish out a little money and get the official documents. <laughs> the application process. Now, 
you'll get your application, it'll ask you when you created it, it'll ask you what's the name of the work that you're sending in, and it'll ask you if you were commissioned to do it, there'll be spaces for additional people who may or may not have um, been a part of the creation of your work, you can just leave that blank if there's no one else that helped you with, um, with the work that you're copywriting and it'll ask you to send in copies of your work, your writing, your artwork. However, you can also do it online now. That's been available for a number of years now, so you have the choice to print out your application or do it all online. It's a little more money if you send in everything because there's a filing fee. Um, so if you want to save a few dollars, you can do it online. It was $45 to file online. I don't know what year it is right now when you're watching this, um, so be sure to check what the price is because I'm sure the price can fluctuate over the years. So be sure to check that out before you actually file. Super, super special tip! When you file your application for something like artwork, send it in as an entire portfolio versus sending in an application for every piece you've ever drawn. What I mean by this is, if the price is $45 and you file the application for just one painting, for instance, it's $45. However, if you make a portfolio, it'd be like Jimmy Dean's portfolio, years 2000 to 2015, and send in like 200 paintings, it's still $45. And why? Because it counts as one collection. So as long as it's one cohesive collection, you can send it in and it's just one flat rate because it belongs to one application. The same thing goes for something like your writing. You wouldn't copyright it one page at a time. You'll send in the entire story, one big bulk, um, and that's it, just one flat rate. Where to get your application? There are a very small number of ways to get your application. I prefer that you go straight to the Library of Congress or copyright.gov. It needs to be .gov because it's a government site. If it's .com or .net, run away. Don't do it. Go to the .gov website. I'll have all the links down below, so be sure to check that out. You can also get your application from um, a lawyer, but honestly, um, it, you can do it on your own. 100%. You don't need to spend a few hundred dollars to hire someone else to do it for you. Also, you can go on sites like LegalZoom. LegalZoom allows you to fill out your application and there's little question marks besides each of the questions on the application. And when you click on the little question marks, in very, very simple English, it'll explain what each question is asking you for. So that's actually a really good option for people. Just remember that doing it through LegalZoom costs a bit more than doing it yourself, just getting your application off of the official Library of Congress website because LegalZoom is charging you for their help and their services. So just keep that in mind. Um, but go check it out and see what their um, current prices are before you get all excited and go running to LegalZoom. <laughs> and after you're done with your application, um, if you're doing it yourself, if you're mailing it in, the application will actually tell you where to mail everything in along with a money order and so on and so forth. But if you're doing it online through LegalZoom or through, or through the official Library of Congress website, it'll take you, let me think, about nine months to a year to receive your application. Remember, there are probably tens of thousands of people sending in applications every month. You know, so you have to be a little patient. There are only so many people over there going through all these applications. And um, once it's once it's been reviewed and everything's good, if there aren't any problems, um, it'll get to you on time. And once it comes in the mail, you'll have a nice little certificate that's been signed by the lawyer who went through your application. You save that, make a copy, put that away in a vault 
put that away wherever it is that's fireproof because that's gonna protect your work if God forbid someone was like a total ass and went and stole your stuff. So be sure to protect these documents. They will protect your work. So keep them safe just like you would something like your social security card or your birth certificate. This is so, so, so important to have. So take care of it, okay? So that's it guys, that is all about copywriting and how to do it and what everything means. So hopefully this was really, really helpful for you and did not discourage you from doing it. I say 100% go out there, spend a little extra money and copyright your work and protect your, your creations. You worked hard on this stuff, you should have it protected. So. I hope it was helpful. Please give it a like if you appreciated it. Um, I hope you'll share it with your other artist friends. And I hope you'll subscribe and look forward to other tutorials. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask down there in the comments below. And if you have any video suggestions, please leave them in the comments as well. I'm always open for new ideas and such. So please follow me on, on social media like Instagram and Tumblr, although you can see my artwork posts every day, as well as sneak peeks to future volumes of my manga. And you could also read chapters of my manga for free on my site, sacredthemanga.com. So I'll see you next week on Thursday. So until next time, guys, please take care, God bless, and do not be afraid to nerd out. Take care and good luck on your journeys.